officer and I worked for Natural England and about six years ago um, I wasn't really enjoying what I was doing anymore. Um, Natural England had become um, quite civil servanty for me. Um, it was quite restricting and I felt quite sort of trapped and I knew I had to get out so I took voluntary redundancy and left um, to find a, a new freedom in myself really because I was feeling very constricted and I did some freelance work for a year, uh, which was lovely, and I really enjoyed that, doing all sorts of things, um, different things to what I've been doing. Um, and then one day, uh, I went out and bought a big canvas and started painting. And that was the moment when either art found me, or I found art. And by doing that, uh, my life has taken a, a turn that's completely different. is an expert on First World War. I actually met him in a beer tent um, because he was the chairman of the Great War Society when I met him. At the beginning of the centenary of World War I, I thought, I think I need to paint him a painting just to commemorate the 100 years since World War I started. I, I painted that first painting. And then I went on to paint a second painting, and then a third, and now I've almost become as obsessed with World War I as he is. And so at the beginning of uh, 2015, I looked back at the events from 1915 and decided what I was going to commemorate this year. And a big part of that for me was the name Edith Cavill, who jumped out from all the research that I was doing. Uh, because she is associated with Peterborough, which is where I'm based. Edith Cavill was born in Swardston, which is a village near uh, Norwich, and her father was a vicar. And in Victorian times, uh, the daughter of a vicar was brought up very strictly. So she was brought up to do lots of good in the local community. She ended up uh, being sent away to school because her father found her smoking in his study one day and was quite horrified. So she attended a number of private schools, um, including one in Peterborough called Laurel Court, which is at the side of Peterborough Cathedral. Laurel Court was a special school. Um, it was run by two ladies who specialised really in languages. So while she was there, she learnt fluent French. She became a nurse at the age of 30, which is the same age as Florence Nightingale became a nurse. She had various jobs in nursing, and as her career progressed, she got to a point where uh, an eminent surgeon in Brussels contacted her and asked if she would like to set up a school of nursing in Brussels. This is one of the houses uh, that made up four houses that were the training school for nurses when Edith Cavill first came to Brussels. When World War I actually broke out, Edith Cavill was home in Norwich. Without hesitation, she packed her bags and she set off back to Brussels. Things were rapidly changing. The Germans invaded and imposed military law on all the civilian populations. The nursing home was affected quite badly by this, and certainly at the beginning of the war, they were treating soldiers from all sides. This was very important to Edith Cavill because she believed that every man was a soldier, a father, a husband, somebody's son, and everybody should be treated just as if they were anybody else. So she imposed that ethos onto her nurses. 
After a short while, the school was not treating any German soldiers because the Germans set up their own hospitals on the front line. One day, two soldiers were brought to the nursing home. They were British soldiers, they were injured, and they were brought by somebody who knew Edith Cavill was a British nurse. She took them in and she nursed them in secret. And as their wounds were healing, she was thinking, what on earth can I do with these soldiers? Because if she gave them in, she knew they would either be shot or they would be imprisoned for the rest of the war. She found contacts who she trusted enough to get these soldiers to the border in Holland. And that's what happened. And she helped hundreds of Allied soldiers escape from German-occupied Brussels. Edith was heavily involved in the resistance movement that saved these soldiers. Jack was a dog that turned up one day on her doorstep. And as always, she liked to care for things that other people wouldn't care for. And Jack was welcomed into the house with open arms. But Jack was an ideal little tool for her to use. She used to take him for a walk in the evenings and she would have soldiers trailing behind her as she walked through the streets of Brussels, taking the soldiers to the next contact in the line to take them to Holland to save them. The Germans had become increasingly suspicious of the activities that Edith Cavill was carrying out. One evening, late at night, there was a knock on the door and the first members of the group were arrested. A couple of days later, it was Edith Cavill's turn the knock on the door came and she was arrested and taken to Saint-Gilles prison in Brussels. Standing behind me is Saint-Gilles prison and this is the prison where Edith Cavill was brought after her arrest in August 1915. She was held here for 10 weeks in solitary confinement. The trial of over 30 people in the resistance network lasted two days. Nobody was allowed any representation. It was brief. The verdict for Edith Cavill was treason she was to die the following morning at dawn. There was no time for an appeal from her. On the 12th of October 1915, early in the morning, Edith Cavill got up and got dressed. She was taken from Saint-Gilles prison to the rifle range in Brussels. They were stood in front of two posts. Two yellow coffins were waiting by the side of them. The firing squad stepped forward. Shots rang out and they fell to the ground. This is a memorial to Edith Cavill, but also other um, Belgian citizens that were shot uh, by the Germans. Uh, this is actually situated in the area where Edith Cavill was executed on the 12th of October at 7am in the morning. Uh, the shooting range has now gone um, and in its place is this beautiful memorial garden um, and behind me is um, a memorial to the people that were shot here. It's a very emotional place sitting here coming to this place, um, knowing that, that she was shot early one morning here. Um, I can imagine it was quite dark actually in October, because um, it was early in the morning. Um, there are lots of trees here now, whether those trees were here then, probably they were, maybe. Um, but it's, it's, it's eerie, it's very quiet, it's very eerie, um, in the middle of a city. All these people here died for their country, um, which is um, an amazing, brave thing for them to do. The idea for the Blanket of Poppies came when I was on my hands and knees creating a carpet of flowers in felt for an international exhibition called Floralia.
I decided on 49 poppies because Edith Cavill was 49 when she was executed. So I decided I wanted 49 women to take part in this project. So we set up workshops for 49 women, not all at once. We did them in groups of about 8 to 10. And it was an opportunity for those women to come together, share experiences, share stories, whilst they were creating something in remembrance of an inspirational woman and her story. I first started felting when I met an artisan felter, Eve Marshall, who has worked with me on this project. Eve has been involved with the workshops to create the poppies because she is an artisan felter, she knows the process of felting and is an excellent teacher. So I did all the sort of story side of it, uh, sorted out the food, set up the venue, set up the ethos and talk to women about inspiration, about Edith Cavill's story, about the freedom that we now have today. During this time also, I began talks with the uh, Chief Executive at Peterborough City Council saying that really we needed to do an event to commemorate this inspirational lady who had been part of our city's heritage. And thankfully she absolutely agreed with that. She came along to one of the workshops and made a poppy, along with the mayoress at the time as well. And we began talking about how we were going to commemorate her at the War Memorial on the 12th of October a hundred years after Edith Cavill had died. And the pressure was building really because time was going on and we were getting into the time where the blanket really needed to be finished. So we sat down and I sort of just placed the poppies where they needed to be. There was no real thought in that process because that's not how I work. And it actually worked. And we got to the point where the blanket was created because we had a date for uh, a tea party. Uh, so all the ladies could come along and have this unveiling of the blanket. Many years ago, um, I was a nurse and I've uh, Florence Nightingale was very much um, one of my heroines and since moving to Peterborough um, I learnt about Edith Cavell and when um, Sharon mentioned what she was doing I felt I needed to be involved and I am and I've really really enjoyed it I can't put into words really it's um, to be on the, the day um, to be at one of the groups with the sort of making of the poppers and everything. It was absolutely just amazing. Everybody was so different. Um, I felt like, oh I imagined, I think is probably the best way to put it, that what it must have been like back in, I don't know, the American Civil War when, when the ladies had their knitting circles. Oh wow. Oh, oh wow. That's amazing. <laughs> I'm a community matron here in Peterborough, have been a nurse all my adult life and I heard about Sharon's project when she came to our Royal College of Nursing branch meeting and invited us to become involved if we so wished and so I called her. How would you describe Edith Cavell? <sighs> Very strong woman, um, a pet lover. Um, somebody who really appreciated life and its values. Um, I think she was a very fair-minded person. I'd say that she was pretty stoical. Of course, I'm, I'm quite a, an admirer of, of Sharon. Um, lovely, outgoing person. 
I don't think she's the, uh, uh, the same type of personality as Edith Cavill, but I would say that there are some similarities there. Yeah, the big one in front of the fire. <laughs> the bit of queen. Not on that. No. Yeah, yeah. 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 at the bottom. That's right, that's yeah. it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. I do lace making. Um, I make jewellery. Um, I've got other girl anything. Sharon put on a lovely buffet. It was, you know, just nice, relaxed, um, please yourself, and endless cups of tea and cakes galore. All the quotes are quotes associated with her that you know, she made, or um, you know, words and symbols, you know, part of her life work or execution, so the dates in her life and all that sort of thing on them. But I think for me, the overall. Um, you know, the, the blanket itself is absolutely stunning. And I, and I have to be honest, I can sit here and I look, and each time I look, you know, there are different things I see in every copy. Um, and I think it's, it's, as I say, outside, it surpassed my expectations. You know, I had the obvious idea in my head of what it would be like. Um, but as we went through the process, you know, I, I didn't at the beginning think we would have Great Britain and Belgium with the sea, but that just felt that's how we had to do it. Um, so, you know, it's just, it's sort of progressed, and that's how art is. And each poppy, I don't know, I mean, you won't notice this after because you've not looked underneath, but each poppy is actually named with your names. Oh, oh really? I, mean. I just hope I've got them all right. Oh. <laughs> but I think I have, because I did, you know, oh, wow. even I did sort of put them on with um, all the useful photographs I yeah. took off. So that's the reason mm -hmm. I took the photographs, but of course you wouldn't have known at the time. No. But yeah, so they're all named underneath as well. Mm. So. I've got goosebumps. Yeah, yeah. 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 It is it's it's absolutely beautiful. beautiful. It's over there, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so right. then you come across here and you're coming out to Wales and then in the black you're going up to Scotland. Mm. I was just reading a quote yeah. about the fair trade, you know, about the depressing status of women in the world, you know, 90% of the work, 10% of the pay, 70% of the poorest or something like this. And I just think this is so amazing, you know, like, like the colour is like, so stunning, so vibrant. So, like we were just saying, you know, you're individual poppy, but you're, you're just part of a whole. And um, it just feels like a real celebration of women. That's fantastic. Because that's, yeah. yeah. that's how it feels to me too. It? Yeah, it's not just about Edith. This is about you and about me and about us exactly. yeah. as a group of women being strong together. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I love it. I love it. But like, like yeah. even with the felting, yeah. you know, you kind of yeah. think, how does this happen out of something that should be yeah. so fragile and then it's strong? strong. And it just feels like really like that. You know, you've got these pads where you feel like you could pull it apart, it's very fragile, but it's actually really strong as a whole piece. Get rid of that. I'll get the page, I'll to put that. Come on, there's plenty of room for the other ladies. There is, there's lots of room. Come on, there's room for both. It's amazing. The feeling is, I can't put into words. I just got goosebumps. It's absolutely amazing. And no just loud out until they've eaten at least two pieces of cake. <laughs> because I've just made loads. Right. <laughs> Come on girls. Have you got something to hide? It was incredible watching people's emotions that they've been part of something so beautiful was really humbling as an artist you know it's that's what makes my work special to me when people have that response to the work that they've been involved in and the work that i've been doing and for many during that project they understood the freedom uh, that an artist has and they connected with that freedom and for some of them they've actually gone on now to give up the jobs that they felt restricted in and are going on to fulfil their lives in a free and more fulfilling way for them. The commemoration event was set for 7 o'clock in the morning on the 12th of October which many people thought was too early and that we wouldn't get anybody out. Uh, but myself and Gillian Beasley from Peterborough City Council fought for that time because that was a hundred years on from when Edith Cavill died and we felt that was poignant and memorable that we do that at that early morning time when she died.
have gathered to remember Nurse Edith Cavill, who was killed by firing squad on this day and at this time 100 years ago. Eternal God, whose servant Edith Cavill placed her duty to you above all things and laid down her life in protection of others. Make us, after her example, steadfast in all adversity, and abide with us until with all your faithful ones we share the joy of heaven. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We gather here today to remember the British nurse Edith Cabell, who was executed a hundred years ago during World War I. Edith helped hundreds of Allied soldiers escape German occupation Brussels to freedom in Holland. Every thread is a woman weaving their stories within each other, tales of life, joy and pain. They have been lovingly stitched together in perfect communion. Some of the fibres are spun with wonder, dyed in every colour. Made with the want to know one another, braiding their tender words into ribbons that make their moments gather, tied side by side. Each she is valued, every nurse, every mother, sharing wool and worms. Standard Hey! Standard! Out. One round. No. Present. giving love that loves to the uttermost and seeks the good of all, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In fact, actually, I had to say to myself afterwards, breathe. <laughs> okay. I then went out in Peterborough and said to people, do you know who Edith Cavill is? And most people went, no. And I thought, well, actually, that's wrong. People should know who she is. So it was even more important that I did something on her. For me, one of the most beautiful moments of that remembrance or commemoration event was the realisation that there was a very feminine energy that was present with us at that time. Usually acts of remembrance at war memorials feel to me very masculine and it was commented on by many people actually that it was a much softer, a much more gentle, a caring atmosphere that, that was there that day. It's difficult to put into words how I feel now that it's all over uh, in a sense. It's 
it's changed me as a person. It's changed the way I'm going to work in terms of my World War I commemoration. It's changed the way I look at people who've been involved in war and resistance movements. It's changed the way I look at people around me now, today, uh, with freedom. And it's changed the way I look at the world that we have for people who haven't got freedom. So as we remember those that fought and died when we were a poppy, we must also respect the freedom and liberty they gave to us. And as an artist in this troubled world in which we live, I embrace that freedom and liberty.